Well, hello and welcome to Outdoors for Adventure. In this video, we're going to do an unboxing, and this is going to be the start of definitely a new playlist on our channel. Um, if y'all ever wanted something and you've searched all over the place and you couldn't find what you're looking for exactly like what you wanted and thought, you know, if I could just make it, I'd have it, I'd have it how I wanted it and all things would be good, right? Well, there's a few things that uh, have been going through my mind like that. And uh, I'll give you an example. We have a kind of an off-roady type pop-up camper. And, you know, most of your uh, camper trailers have these rails where you can hang your a table or a stove or something like that. Well, I want to I have a table that goes on that slot or on that rail, or I can put my cook stove up there. But uh, I wanted just a small table uh, that has a couple can holders, a place for spices, uh, some hose where you slide your cooking utensils. And I really hadn't found anything that I liked. So uh, I want to make one. And I've already been playing on CAD and have one designed that I, want, I can make if I have the tool to make it. And that's what this video is about. We are going to unbox a Elidu 3D printer. This is the Neptune 4 Pro. I've already cut the tape, so let's get into it. A lot of things you can make with these. I'm probably going to have to put this in the floor and bring it up to y'all. Wrapped really well, but I'm going to get a picture of the inside the box. So we have the user manual for the Neptune 4 Pro 3D printer. Notice before first use paperwork. Now there is a lot to setting one of these up and we'll get into that later uh, as we go. But for now, let's just get this unboxed and I'll do my best to explain what I know about it as we go. Um, this is new to us. This is something that we have never done before. I do have a little bit of experience with CNC programming and uh, running uh, metalworking machines. So that will come into use doing some of this. Uh, I do have a little bit of experience with CAD and that's going to have a lot to do with this. Uh, but anyway, I do believe I'm going to have to set this in the floor so I have room to put everything on the table. So we have this piece here. That is what the control panel is going to rest on. We have the extension cord. I believe this is to hold your spool of filament. In fact, I know it is. I believe that's going to mount that way. And this should screw into here like so. This is a four fan system. It's going to blow on your filament as you're making parts to keep things cool, keep your uh, head cool. Now, I'm going to warn y'all now, I do not know all the proper terms for all the parts that are on these 3D uh, machines. 
but uh, I think you'll get what I'm talking about as we go. Okay, in this bag here, we have some test filament. Filament. This is to clean the little tube that that passes through. Not sure what that is. Then we have the pieces and bolts that are going to be used to put it together. The tool bag with the tools needed to put it together. This is going to be electro yeah, grease for the 3D printer. Some zip ties. The cable plugged into your uh, router, internet. I'm pretty sure this is a I think this is a thing so it'll pick up your Wi-Fi or let's see it may be a memory looks like it's got an SD card in it so maybe a SD card reader this is your sensor that you're going to have up top and then when you run it, it, when your spool runs out of filament, this will shut the machine down. This is a couple nozzles. Uh, got a memory stick in there. That's going to have some programs on it for the machine. And we are got that bag empty. Let's see. This is a glue stick on some of the tables if you're having problem keeping your filament stuck to the table you uh, can use a little bit of glue stick and it'll help it stick hopefully we won't need much of that okay now we're getting to some of the actual machine This is actually the top it'll go up like this above the table so this is the controller and remember I was talking about it resting in this it's magnetic so that holds that now we're getting the print head with the nozzle this is heats up and it's going to help push the filament through to make your product now we're getting down to the meat and bones of the machine I think I'm about ready to pull that out Okay, this is your table with your table plate that should be magnetic. We're going to go ahead and remove these. And we'll get into more of how you set this thing up later on. But I believe. We have unboxed all the pieces 
and we're going to start putting it together. All right, so we need to get the manual. Let's read this notice before first use. I'm just going to scan over this. We'll go over this again later. It's your auto leveling procedures, which you have to manually level first. Uh, it talks about your power supply voltage, your print head assembly ins installation, and lubrication instructions. So let's go ahead and get the manual. And let me grab y'all. As you can see, I do have everything laid out here. We have our tools. All of the screws or bolts are labeled for what we need to do. All of our little tools. So the print head is going to be this and this is what they're wanting us to put on first see if I can find the end get rid of that and these are the PM316 screws. There'll be two of them. Now here's where having it hand issues, these little Ziploc bags can be the pain. So two of these, that'll be the longer ones. Let's go ahead and put these back in the bag so I don't lose them. And let's go ahead and find our Allen wrench to fit these. I'm thinking the smaller one. Yes. So we have two of those sort of screws from the rear. The rear is going to be this way. Attach the print head assembly using these two screws to fix the printer head through the hose of the cable strain relief bracket to fix the underside of the print head. So we are going to need all of those. So I'm going to dump them all back out. It says And hope I don't drop none of them. Now, I'm trying to see this bracket is going to go right in there, I do believe. There's two rollers and two hose, and that fits up in there. Now, I believe this was the long ones, so it's also going to go through these two hose here. So it's holding the head backwards. Okay. Should be able 
you put those right there. We're going to go ahead and do the front. I think. This is going to be the shorter screws. And that'll hold this head on. Now we're going to go hang the other little screw or bolt. These are the little short. It'll be PM38. Let's line this hole up here. We're not going to tighten these all the way up. We're just going to slightly get them to where they're holding this head on there. Because we may have to move it around a little bit to get the ones they said put on first on. Hopefully I'm not making a mistake doing this first. Okay, now I'm going to go get some of the packing material. In fact, here's some right here. Because we're going to flip this over. Two of those will probably work. Try to hold that up. Now we can take the bracket right here, and this catch part is going to go toward the front. And that should go, it looks to me like it goes up top here. With these longer PM316. Now we're going to go ahead and get the other one before we tighten that one up. That one hit. That one hit. Just gonna snug them up a little bit. Now I got the two in the back. Use the PM3 by 16 screws to fix the print head through the holes of the cable strain relief bracket and two PM38 screws to fix the underside of the print head, which I have done. From the front, affix the remaining two PM38 screws to affix the underside of the print head. So let me look at this. Those two. Not seeing any.
No, I'm not seeing any other places. We're going to tighten these up. I'm going to tighten the back ones up first. Yeah, it don't fit that way. That ought to be good. That ought to be good. Put this over. Go ahead and tighten up these two. I can get that in there. Give this one more check. Okay, go on over to it because those are really fine thread. Now, I'm trying to find, it looks like I already did those. Okay, guys, I'm going to grab y'all real quick and just kind of bring you over the table because the screws, okay, here is two of those. These are the two long ones. And you see this wheel? There are two more on each side of that wheel. Those were the two I was having issues finding, but there they are right there. And, of course, the two, I'm not going to move that with one hand, so... There's two on the front, and you can't miss those. All right, so let's put these other two little uh, PM38 in those two holes that I just showed you that are right by this wheel. Hopefully I can get them in there without dropping them. I need to move this back up here. Yeah, if I can hang on to the itsy bitsy screws or bolts. All right, that one's in. That one's in now. Let's snug them up. I should say tighten them up. That one's good. And that one's good. So that should be the print head on there now. 
So then, oh, and before I go any further, we have to be sure, let's find our electrical. I don't want to touch that because my hands have been on those rails and I'm pretty sure they have grease on them. I'm thinking it's going to be... Okay, here we go. On the back side, this is your power button over here. On your back side is your switch to put your voltage on 230 or 115. This comes from the factory for 230. I'm gonna be running it on 110, so we're sliding this over to 115. Just like that. Be sure you do that. And that's what this yellow piece of paper is. Be sure you read this before you do any kind of plugging this thing in. All right, so we've got that in. Next step on this is we're going to actually put this onto this part here. I think I'm going to get some more of the packing material because I'm going to have to prop one side up. All right, so to put the back on, I don't know if I'll need this or not, but we got it. This bag is now empty. Uh, to put the back on, we're using HM545. I'm pretty sure that's going to be the big ones. These four, and they're black. Those are going to hold that to the base. Two per each side. I can get the bag open. All right, that bag will be empty too. And then we need to get the bigger Allen wrench. Pretty sure that's going to be the biggest one there. And let's look at the bottom of this. You can see there's a hole there, a hole there on each of these. So that's what we're going to line up with. Let me lay this back down. There is hole here on each side of the table so probably i'm going to have to let's do this side has the power cord on it so i'm wondering if i can just get that up high enough make sure i'm not putting it on anything i don't need to This is where a couple extra hands would come in really handy. I'm going to go ahead and feed that through there. Maybe this won't be too difficult. Should have backed this up just a little bit more. I don't think I'm quite right. All right, we need to back this up where I can access it a little bit easier. Lay this back down. Mm -hmm. 
that are to work. Make sure I got my bolt. I'll hang it over the edge of the table just a little bit. And maybe that'll make it easier. And that's the front. There's a cable here that you have to watch out for. I think I finally grabbed the hole. We're going to go ahead and put a little bit of tightness to it. I think I got it. Yeah. Let me sure we're off that cable back there. We are. All right, that's snug. So I'm going to go ahead and put the other one in on this side too. Okay, we almost got this one in. All right. We'll come back and tighten them up later. We're going to flip it around so I can get to this side. And that cable, I think we're going to have to kind of push it aside to get to it. Make sure we're not on any cables. Oh, yeah, this cable is kind of covering the holes just a little bit. Uh, not bad at all, though. See how lucky we are. Do we line up? Come out just a little bit more. Thought I left them over there loose enough that Look like we're over far enough. Nope. Oh, dropped it. Oh, me. We'll get there eventually.
I think I caught it. There we go. Now this is the Neptune 4 Pro. And I guess uh, like an 8 inch by 8 inch or close to 9 inch table. I don't remember right offhand. But they make a Max. And it's got a, I think a five inch bigger table. And I have a feeling some of the stuff that I'm wanting to print, I'm definitely going to have to get the one with the bigger table. But I thought that this would be a the good one to learn with, make sure I can do what I need to do with this one before I invest, you know, in another one. And uh, this machine was on sale. And we got and we got two rows of filament and I think we spent three hundred and sixty dollars. All right, so since these are in, I can get this off. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten them up. A little more light would have been nice. All right, we got these tight. I see four screws on this side that's the same size as those. I'm gonna just kind of test to make sure they're tight. All right, those on that side are tight. This period on you didn't. We're gonna flip it around and then tighten these back up. I know you are a little bit away from me. This may not be the best way to show this put together, but hopefully y'all can understand what I'm doing. And if I can do this, you can do it too. Probably a little easier if you have a little more coordination with your hands than I do. I'm going to call that one good. One more time on that one. Make sure this one's good too, still. All right, I think we're good there. I'm going to go ahead and check these four here. All right. Make sure I'm not on my cables. All right. Now, that's done. Now we're going to put the control holder. Let me see if I can move a little closer to y'all because we're going to be putting this mount here on. So let's just go ahead and pull this up here and see where we're at. Three holes here. 
and up in here inside these slots are one two three holes now that says get our book on that we are going to use pm420 pm445 pm4 18 pm 23 screws the other screws that i checked for tightness when i was over there were these four here it's not going to hurt to run through all these bolts and don't over tighten anything but just check them to make sure that they're good and snug I get this bag open. There we go. These type bags are the vein of me. Okay, there's that. May need a different Allen wrench here. I'm thinking this one. Well, nope. this one feels right. So this. There's two at the bottom. Let's see here. Two at the bottom and one at the top. So we're going to put this one in. That one in first. To be one of the bottom ones. And it is magnetic. Pulling my wrench up. Trying to stay out y'all's way. Got that one started. Okay, now grab another one. A little bit harder because it's going to be closer to the table. Now, I may have to tip this thing over because I just can't see down there. It's nothing that it should hurt. hurt. Just be easy with it. There we go. Now I can see it. Y'all get a look at the bottom too. Got a fan there, fan there. Ah. And I dropped it. Let's see. Right. Are we going to catch it? Yeah. Hopefully this one will go right in. Let's see. Oh, the magnet's catching it. I think I grabbed it right there. So, let's start snugging these up.
over here. Name that keeps pulling my wrench out. That'll be good there. One more there. And hopefully one here. And that's on. So that is going to hold that. Now let's see what else we have. Release the left and right protective corners of the socket to install the flat cable. It's talking about this. Pretty sure we're talking about this. So we're going to just pull those over. We'll plug this in. Let's see. Make sure I got this right way. Looks like it goes this way. Let's see, there's a slide. I only go one way. Push it until these clip, which it did. And then you're going to work this cable into this little holder. See, we're in there now. So we got that done. Now, on this, it shows that they've plugged in this cable here, and it's going to go into the front. It's like a little phone clip. Only one place it can go. It's going to go right there. And then you have a USB-C and the other smaller USB there. Make sure you all are getting that. Should be. Okay, so looks like now we're going to put the filament holder on. And we're going to use PM418. PM48. PM418. That'll be these. Okay, we got those open. Two of those. And we're going to... This is what's going to go up here in the holes. Or where are the holes? You e e logo right there. All that was in that bag was those screws. These are not threaded. Ah, oh, no. Yeah, okay. I'm going to have to get y'all so I can show you this. These are like stuck together. Uh, that's what I heard moving around. And then, never done one of these before, so let me grab y'all. When you get ready to put your filament holder in, these little two nuts here slide in this groove, and that's what you're going to be looking for. I thought that was going to be in it itself, but it is not. So now we can just. Go ahead and put 
one zip in there and we will line it up with the bolt Oh, I thought I caught it. Yeah, I did. Let's see if we can go ahead and grab the other one. Before we get it to you. That should grab right there. I actually think I have the wrong wrench for that. This one. There we go. So we're going to, I'm going to line that up with that Ely Goo. Let me make sure that's what they did. Looks like that's where it is. I'm going to push it forward. It was close enough to me. Keep a little bit of forward pressure on it. That would be tight enough on that one. Uh, this one probably too, but yeah, it's good. Uh, yeah okay and I've already screwed that in so now we're going to put this filament sensor on it will shut the machine down when your roll of filament runs out. And the boat for it is already in there in the bag. Right here. I believe it's going to be this same Allen wrench. No. This one here. Yes. And since our roll is going to be on this side because there's a plug right here for for this. We're going to put this in on this side. Just like so. Thinking. Let me look at their picture and see how they have theirs. The plug is like that, so. Okay, so it's even though you tighten this up, that bracket is still going to.
move on both axes. It'll move this way and it'll move up and down. And when you're hooked up, in fact, we're gonna go ahead and plug this cable in to the sensor. Right here. It only go one way. Okay, so that's done. Now we're going to put a cable clamp on for this big cable. And we're going to use P48 cable clamp. P48 cable clamp. This right here. Everything is nicely labeled. I really like that. I haven't really had to guess at anything other than those two screws that were back here kind of threw me for a loop for a minute because I didn't see them. But this just clamps around this cable and it's going to, let me turn this around carefully. Let's see. When installing the cable clamp, you will need the first to first organize the cables and bunch them together before fully securing the clamp. Be sure to leave enough slack for the hot end to travel freely to each end and up and down. So that's going to connect right here. And let's see, these cables plug in here. So this cable is going to want to go in the mount with the big cable. So this is one screw. This is this way. So it's just going to Clamp over like that. I want to go ahead and get this cable in there too. It's up underneath this one. I think it would be better underneath. I might should have put it in first. There we go. Now, we are going to have to kind of squish this big cable up a little bit, kind of curve it around a little bit, so it clears the hole, just like that. Now, we're going to go ahead and get our screw wherever I misplaced it. There it is, right by the tool. I think we're going to need the smaller tool. Oh, yeah, this one here. I'm going to go ahead. And kind of figure out how much there I should go like that. No, they go on top, look like.
So we're all the way up. Got some slack in there. I think I'm going to push it further in. And it come out of the I'll get it, guys. I promise. I have definitely learned patience as I've grown older. I can get this cable back in there a little better. I want to rest that way. So I think I'm going to. Now I'm worried about that. I wonder if I think. That goes under here so i've already found a mistake so we need to pop this back out and it goes underneath this top rail i didn't look at that picture good enough when i did it let's plug it back in Make sure it's clipped. Put it back in the bracket. There. That's much better. I knew something wasn't quite right. So that goes underneath this top bar. So now we definitely have plenty of room. Now, these, one of these is going to plug... Let's see, we got a plug down here. That looks like the longer one. So this one is going to go up underneath here. I can't see. Ah! Because it goes that way, this way. Just that one. Right, there's that one. And then this one is going to go right in here. Just like that. Okay. Now I'm going to read their instructions, but I think we got to plug these in. Nope, they are putting the cooling fan on now. That's going to be this. This is where the air comes out. It's going to blow toward the coolant head. So that is going to mount in these holes here. There's three. 
that's where this plug is going to go. So we need these three long ones, PM445, and I believe that's the last bag of bolts we have. And that's going to be that little wrench right there, I think. Nope, smaller. That'll be the one we've been using. Yes. So we're going to drop in that middle one. And then we're going to line it up with that hole. And my cable would be in the way. It's slightly snug. Go ahead and put the other two in. And the last one. Now, even though we've almost got this together, it's far from being ready to print. We're going to have to check, make sure everything's tight, check for the tension on stuff, the belts and the rollers. But we're going to end this video when I get it put together, and then we'll start an alignment and getting it ready to print video. I might go all the way to the alignment. We'll see. Because I know this video is long, and I know it takes me a while to get stuff put together. But I try to do it right, but everybody makes mistakes as that cable position was wrong, but it is right now. Let's see, that ought to be high enough. All right. They're on there. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. It will only go one way. I think. Get my hands up in there. And pop that bad boy in. All right, it's in there. That ought to be fine. Okay, so we've got the fan on. We plugged the plug in there. The, basically, we're going to plug everything in now. You've got a cable here that will plug in on this Z axis. Another one that'll be Z axis, it'll be the 
long skinny one. There we go. And then these plug into these two. Got a bigger one. And then a smaller one. And all those are plugged in. This, of course, is your power cable. So I'm not going to plug it in right now, but it'll plug in right here. I'm going to be getting a longer uh, cable for that. Now, on these instructions, it talks about lubrication instructions before using your printer for the first time it's strongly recommended to apply the supply grease on the surfaces of the rails shown below to ensure the smooth sliding and varying components further additional grease should be periodically reapplied as part of ongoing and regular printer maintenance and the slide is right here let me turn this around Let's see, best way to do this. These rollers roll across this silver bar, so we'll put some there. And where else does it show some? The rails up underneath here. Okay, so we're going to turn this on for the first time. Power switch is over here. We've got our light on up there, LED light. You can hear our fans running there. And we've got the screen coming on there. 